a love alone. Yeah. He's a masterpiece. Yeah. You just tracking me. Yeah. He an afterteeth with the masterpiece. The you a morning man? I'm more man. Yeah. You YouTube? I sword fish. Yeah. I done leveled up from a grown man yeah. to a damn kid. Next level Ooh. shit. I had to come up out the world, ayy. Hey. I had to level up. I had to level up. Ooh. Had to repent and change my ways, you know, etc. Et Stop being a nigga. Live like a king. Take it to level up. Daddy's you gotta level up. Stop blaming the man. Get with the plan. You need to level up. You need to level up. Royalty, we royalty. My team be their royalty. How can you claim royalty if you ain't got no loyalty? Royalty, we royalty. My team screaming royalty. How can you claim royalty if you ain't got no loyalty? Royalty, we royalty. My team be their royalty. How can you claim royalty if you ain't got no loyalty?
know what time it is, man. Hey, we want all the smoke, man. We made it happen. Now it's time to take it a level up, man. Take it a level up. Mike, Mike. Slide over something. Yes, sir. All oh, praise. Shalom, shalom, family. Most high in Christ. Bless. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I'm Officer Halez. To my right. Also, Kalel. Also, Kalel. Welcome to Daily Bread. Daily Bread. Hope everybody's up in the good spirits. All right. Uh, let's hit. Uh, let's bring out the disclaimer. Leviticus chapter five, verse one. Leviticus chapter five, verse one. Israel united in Christ. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent, Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. Oh, praise. So uh, let's not have a short memory for all you new brothers and sisters online. We are not a hate group. Everything we do is thus saith the Lord. We bring out of the scriptures. So we are, uh, we are reading the Bible. <laughs> so if you don't like what, what is being said in the Bible, tune into some other different class or Christian network, whatever you want to go listen to. But here in on Daily Bread, we're going to bring out what the Lord uh, has has instructed his people. We're going to bring out the scriptures. All right, so in, in order to begin, we are going to send up prayers. We're going to face the east. Sisters, cover your heads. Brothers, uncover your heads. And we're going to send up prayers. You got your trumpets? All right, here we go, Israel. All right. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Heavenly Father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for all things seen and unseen, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another day, Heavenly Father. Bless our food and our drink. Heavenly Father, pour your spirit upon us that we may increase in fear, in faith, and in wisdom, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless your people, your holy nation that you have chosen from the beginning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the nation of Israel. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your tender mercies and for your grace. Forgive us for our transgressions, Heavenly Father. Have mercy upon our souls. Have mercy upon our brothers and sisters, Heavenly Father. Continue to uh, pour your spirit, Heavenly Father, on them. Heavenly Father, they may do your work in spirit and truth. Heavenly Father, we pray for more laborers. We pray that you bring more laborers to the fold, that you continue to bless the congregation, you continue to bless IUIC, Heavenly Father, open up doors for our leadership. Open up, open up doors, Heavenly Father, in the four corners of the earth that we may continue to spread this gospel so that you may make the time short in these last days. Heavenly Father, we pray for the demise and destruction of our enemies as stated in Psalms chapter 149, Heavenly Father. For those that hate your commandment keepers, Heavenly Father, your chosen seed, we pray that you afflict them, Heavenly Father, and that you allow Israel to rule the earth once more, Heavenly Father, that you continue to pour your spirit upon us, Heavenly Father, that you have mercy upon us, Heavenly Father, that you continue to pour your grace upon us. Heavenly Father, give us the spirit of understanding. Give us the spirit of charity so that we may know how to deal with one another, Heavenly Father. 
Heavenly Father, we pray that the brothers and sisters online gleam some from this classroom. We pray for our leadership, Heavenly Father, from the bishops, the deacons, and captains on down. Bless the wombs of the mothers, Heavenly Father. They more bring forth more children, Heavenly Father, making the nation strong, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all things. We thank you in all things. In your almighty name we pray, we say, Amen. All praises. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, we got to get into this real quick. Controversial title today. All right, we all know what what month is it? It's June. <laughs> That's what I know it as, just June. I don't know it as anything else. Do y'all know? You brothers and sisters, y'all know anything else? All I know is that this is the month of June. Right. But apparently, there's uh, there's something else that the world is calling the month of June. Would you care to expound on that, Officer Kyle? <laughs> hey, real quick, uh, if we get a brother to scribe so that the uh, brothers and sisters online, it can help them uh, follow along and keep up with the scriptures, it'd be greatly appreciated. Be a good way for one of you brothers to put in your brick as well. Go ahead, Officer Kyle. Well, I, I call them the, the alphabet team because I kind of get lost in the acronyms. Uh, so it's what, L-G-B-T-U-D-W-X? Right, yeah, yeah, right, yes, right, yes, right, right. So we just spitting out letters, all right? So don't block us. We just we gonna bring out the scriptures today, all right. So we want to know what God thinks about what's known as Gay Pride Month. Right. Right. June is known as Gay Pride Month. Hey, can we pull that up? Can we pull up an article? Mm. All right. All you gotta do is just pull up Gay Pride June. Look up the New York Times. Watch this. Put Gay Pride June New York Times. Let's see what we get. June, yep. All right. Okay. There we go, Biden. Yeah, click, click on that. So here we go. We got Biden visits site. Uh, what is that? That is not it. Oh, there we go. Biden. So Biden is the uh, president of the United States. All right. Officially recognizes June as Pride Month and vows to fight for LGBTQ rights. Mm. He's willing to fight for what's known as gay pride. Or here, let's let's get it out the way. L stands for lesbian, right. gay, uh, bisexual, transgender, queer. Right. Queer. queer. Yep. And then they got. Like Officer mentioned, Officer Kala, you mentioned there's they they've added you know yeah. other acronyms and letters. Right. We we can't keep up. You got uh, letters for those that like to marry animals. Right. Uh, those that like to marry their dog, their cat. Um, some some pedophiles. Pedophiles. Some pedophiles would like to be included. Right. They they claim that they were born pedophiles. Yeah. So they they also want to be. You know they want they want a they want a letter. They're searching for a letter. Right. So, this is this is just you know this is this is the world that we live in. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this is the world that we live in, brothers and sisters. Give me Romans chapter fifteen, verse four, man. Let's get into the scriptures. Romans chapter fifteen and verse four. Come on. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So now we are gonna we are gonna get into the scriptures and we're gonna read. Things that God wrote aforetime. Read. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So they were wrote, they were written for our learning that we through the scriptures we might have hope. Okay? Um, because guess what? You got brother, you know, there, there's people in the world, you know, they live their life, but guess what? We the Israelites, we are the Jews, and we understand that we're going to rise up against the evil. Right. God calls it evil. You understand? We can find that in the Bible. And guess what? We are going to renounce corruption. The Israelites are going to, we're going to uh, stand up against the evildoers of this world. Right. And we're going to get all those scriptures. So watch this. Give me Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. Let's see what it got to say. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. Watch this. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness 
and worldly lust. So now the grace of God has appeared to all men, right? And what does the grace of God teach us? It says it teaches us that denying ungodliness, meaning whatever's against God, and worldly lust. Read. We should live soberly. We should live soberly. Righteously. Come on. And godly. Read. And this present world. So the Bible's talking about 2021. Right. Right. Just because this was written a four time doesn't mean that the Bible ain't talking about this present time. Yes, it's talking about this present world right now. We should live godly, soberly, righteously in this present world. Read. Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on. Who, who gave himself for us. He gave himself for us. Jesus Christ did not give himself for us so that we can practice uh, customs that he's against in the Bible. Right. And we're going to prove we're going to prove that Christ is against those such things. We'll bring it up. Read. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. From all iniquity, meaning sin, all sin. Read. And purify unto himself a peculiar people. Which are the Israelites, read. Zealous of good works. Read. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Read that one more time. And rebuke with all authority. You see that? So we're not going to shy away. Right. You're not going to You're not going to intimidate. The Israelites, because that's that's what that's that's what uh a lot of these communities that's what they do. Oh oh, they're against us. Oh, we're gonna shut you down. No, we're gonna stand up for what the Bible says. We're gonna stand up for what we believe in. There's a lot of brothers and sisters. Uh, there was matter of fact, there was a sister that was in the WNBA, who she was, she was uh persecuted for having heterosexual pride. So apparently, the H acronym, you're not allowed to have pride in that. But you can have pride in being lesbian, gay, queer, whatever. Right. You could be a pedophile. You could, you could, be, uh, you could marry your dog. But don't you have pride in your heterosexualism? You know, you know what I'm saying? I forgot what that sister's name was. Because, you know, that, that, uh, that league is full of LGBTQ uh, sisters right. who think that they're men. They think they're men or they like women. You know what I'm saying? We see that. You got it? Go ahead. Pull that up. And it's, it's even worse when you're so-called African-American, Hispanic, or Native American speaking out about those things. Right. So the scripture says rebuke with all authority. Why? Because here's a testament right here to what we're talking about. You got a sister named Candace Wiggins. She said, I was bullied for being straight in a 98% Gay WNBA league. Where's the where's the uh where's the outcry for this? Right. Where's the outcry? Where is the protesting? Where's the marching. protesting for the for the for being bullied for being straight? Right. Dang. Does it? I mean, what what do the what do they claim in the LGBTQ? They say, well, uh, when you're bullied for what you believe in, it causes trauma, depression. Uh, a lot of people become uh, suicidal. Right. Well, what about for those brothers and sisters that have pride in being heterosexual? That's why we're here. We're here to defend our people, and we are going to rebuke you with all authority, as, as the Scripture saith. Read it again. Give me Titus 2, read verse 15. Titus chapter 2 and verse 15. You these, can take that down. These things speak and exhort. And rebuke with all authority. Read. Let no man despise thee. And let no man despise you. Okay. Let's now let's let's get uh let's get Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 26. Because now, now that it's this so-called gay pride month, if the Lord is against it, how come how come the pastors are not how come they're not teaching what the Bible says? Let's get that real quick so we can end the confusion. Give me Leviticus 18 and 22. Hold that. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. If you're a Christian, if you're Catholic, if you're Jehovah's uh, w wickedness, if you're seventh-day disadvantaged, whatever your religion is, don't you, isn't, isn't, your, um, isn't your blueprint 
the holy scriptures, the word of God. Right. That's where we get all the, all these words of uh, 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 Jehovah's Witness. You can read that in the book of Isaiah, the witnesses of God. Uh, you know, you, you got all these religions. Don't the holy, isn't that what you stand? Isn't the Their Bible foundation. the blueprint? Isn't that the foundation right. of what you believe in according to your religion? This is the problem why people don't read the Bible, though. Let's read what the Word got to say. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 22. Come on. Thou shalt not lie with mankind. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not lie with mankind. Come on. As with womankind. God said, the Lord said, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Read. It is abomination. Because the Lord says it's an abomination. You're not supposed to sleep to lie with mankind, meaning you're not supposed to sleep with mankind as with womankind. You're not supposed to sleep with the a man the way you would with a woman. That's what it's saying. Right. That goes into what? Obviously, that goes into homosexuality. That goes into being bisexual, whatever you want to call yourself. God says it's an abomination. The Bible said it's an abomination. Read it again. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 22. Bring it up. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. As with womankind, read. It is abomination. God called it an abomination. Right? Let's get, hold that, get Sirach chapter 15 verse 3. What does it mean that it's an abomination? Hey, pull that, pull that definition up for abomination. Read what you got. Because God says when you're a homosexual, when you sleep with mankind, that's with womankind, it's an abomination. Read that in, in Sirach 15 and 3 real quick. Watch this. Sirach chapter 15 and verse 3. Come on. With the bread of understanding. Uh, 15 and 13. I'm sorry. Sirach chapter 15 and verse 13. Go ahead. The Lord hateth all abomination. Read that one more time. The Lord hateth all abomination. What did he just call an abomination? He just called abomination those that lie with mankind as with womankind. Right. Maybe they forgot. Flip it back to Leviticus 18 and 22. Maybe y'all forgot online what the Lord just called an abomination. Read what you got. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. As with womankind. Why? It is abomination. No, them brothers in purple said that, uh, uh, that they're against it. Read. It is is abomination. Guess what? We're going to follow the scriptures. Right. We're going to reinforce. We are the enforcers of the law that God gave us. That Guess what? You got a Bible in your house and you can read the same scripture. If you don't, I mean, why do you have a Bible in your house if you're not going to, if you're not going to do what the Bible says? You are lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. Go back to Sirach 15, 13. Sirach chapter 15 and verse 13. Go ahead. The Lord hateth all abomination, and they that fear God love it not. You see that? We don't love an abomination. We don't love abominations. Right. Some people love their gay pride. God calls that an abomination. You love your lesbian pride. God calls it an abomination. Now let's get that in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 26. Read. Her priests have violated my law. So, your, the priest goes into your religions, your pastors. Guess what? They violate God's laws. Right. Read. Her priests have violated my law. Come on. And have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. You hear that? So now, here at Israel United in Christ, we're going to put we're going to put a difference between the holy and the profane. Right. We're going to show you that God caused. Uh, LGBTQ, a profane act. Okay, we read about it in Leviticus 18 and 22. But your Christian pastor, Catholic, whatever, Baptist, Pentecostal, Episcopalian, uh, whatever you are, because those are acronyms too. I, I can't right. even keep up with those neither. There's right. a lot of uh, brothers in there that's effeminate, right. sisters that are in there that are masculine, that run the churches. You see, you see that spirit in the churches today. You see brothers in the choir that are very, very, uh, very effeminate. Amen. Some are even gay. Right. And they're in the church singing for the choir. Right. With their, uh, you know, with their mannerisms. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. 
The Lord said he hates that. And you're supposed to put a difference between the holy and the profane. But he says that the leaders today in these churches, they don't do that. They don't do that. Read it again. Verse 26, her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. Uh -huh. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Come on. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. You see that? they Not only did they hide their eyes from the Lord's Sabbath, because instead of keeping the Sabbath on Sunday, I mean, I'm saying on Saturday, what do they do? They keep it on Sunday. Right. Instead of keeping it on the seventh day of the week, which is Saturday, they keep it on Sunday. And not only that, they're not even keeping the Sabbath because they're still buying and selling and, and, and cooking. Cooking pork chops in there. Right. They're cooking pork chop. The pastor's head is bald. Right. This, uh, no beard. Yeah, you got a f female pastor with a, with, a, with a perm and a weave on, with pants on and uh, cleavage out the while she's bringing out the word. What, 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 what is going on? The first lady, right? The f oh, Lord. That, and then they call it a first lady of the church. Her, her, uh, apparently her parking spot is closer than the pastor's. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm telling you, this is, we see this today. Right. We see this today. Y'all, hey, y'all let me know. Y'all let us know if we making this stuff up, man. Where we at? So is that, is that it on that? No, sir. Finish that off. And I am profane among them. All right, give me Psalms 94, verse 16. He said, I am profane amongst them. Why? Because he stands up for what's right. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 94 and verse 16. Come on. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? So who's going to stand up for the laws of God? Who's an evildoer? Somebody that's in sin. Right. God calls sin evil. You understand? God calls sin evil. So who's going to stand up? And rebuke with all authority. We are. That's who's going to stand up. We're going to rebuke with all authority. Thus saith the Lord. We're going to stand up for what God says in the Bible. Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? So who's going to rise up and stand for the Lord? Read. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? The workers of iniquity. We just read the law. Give me that, and uh, watch this. This is what used to happen back in the day. This is what happened before Christ came. Let's get Leviticus 8, uh, 20, verse 13. This is what, what happened uh, before Christ came. Look at what happened. Read. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. Read. If a man also lie with mankind. So if somebody was gay or a woman was a lesbian or bi or trans or whatever you want to call yourself, read. As he lieth with a woman. Come on. Both of them have committed an abomination. Both of them have committed an abomination. Both parties, read. They shall surely be put to death. They shall surely be put to death. Why? Because they were not denying, un they weren't denying ungodliness. Right. That's not godly. God says they'll be put to death because it's not godly. That's not, that's not what God wants. That's not how he wants us to deal with one another. God didn't give us the freedom to do whatever, whatever we want to do. God set forth laws for his people. He said they would be put to death. But now guess what? Christ died. We're under grace. So now everybody says, oh, Christ died so we could do whatever we want. Right. That's, give me Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. Now that we're under grace, we're not being put to death for these things. The Lord has, is having mercy on us. Watch this. Read. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21. Read. I do not frustrate the grace of God. You heard that? He said, I do not frustrate the grace of, the, of God. Thus, we shouldn't be trying to frustrate the grace. That's when people say, oh, we're under grace. Oh, so you're frustrating his grace. Right. You're taking it for granted. Your grace period is going to be snatched. If your grace period is taken... What does that mean? You're going to be put to death. Right. When, uh, when you miss a payment for your rent or your car, what do they give you? They give you a grace period for you to get right. Your life is your grace period. Right now is your grace period to get right, to fix yourself. All you got to do is repent. We're not saying you're going to die. We're saying you can repent. You can come back to the Lord wholeheartedly and fear the judgments of God and repent. 
That's what we're saying. We got brothers and sisters in our school that used to live like that. Right. And guess what? They turned over a new leaf. They learned how to fear God, and they applied the commandments. Now they're hoping for salvation. You understand? So we're not, we're not saying this to let all people, oh, look, you, you know, this is, well, yeah, if you don't repent, yeah, you, you're going to be put to death by the Lord. And you read about that in the Bible. It says evil pursue of sinners. Right. It says if, if, uh, for the wages of sin is death. Y'all heard that before. God calls that a sin. When we read about the laws, right, a, woman, a, a man shall not lie with man as with womankind. It is an abomination, meaning it is a sin. Let's get what a sin is. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Let's take it to the basics. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. We're going we gonna, to we gonna move around in, in 1 and 2 John for a little bit. Read that. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Come on. Whosoever committeth sin. Whosoever committeth sin. Transgresseth also the law. So hold on. We're reading about sin and keeping the laws in the New Testament. So the laws were never done away with. Right. So you must keep the laws that we were bringing out earlier. John, almost at the end of the book. Right. You only got Jude and Revelations after this. He's saying, if you commit sin, you are breaking the law. Why would he say that? Why would John, why would John say this if the laws was done away with? That shows you your church is not treat, they're not teaching you according to the Bible. But whosoever committed sin, you're breaking the law. That's what it means to transgress. You break the law. You don't do what the Bible says. And if you're if you're in sin, the wages of sin is death. You understand? But you gotta let's get uh John 14 and 15. Matter of fact, 2 John 6, since we're already there. 2 John verse 6. Come on. And this is love. Come on. That we walk after his commandments. So this is love, that you walk after God's commandments. That you do. To walk after means you apply. You keep the commandments. Read. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning. Meaning these are the same commandments that you always heard from the Old Testament. The beginning. Right. He's telling you, look, you still got to keep these commandments. So what was one of the commandments? Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. In Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. The reason why I got to continue to quote it is because if not, you know what's going to happen? Those brothers and sisters online that hate the, uh, the prophets, what are they going to do? Oh, they said. The brothers of They purple. said. Yeah, the brothers of purple said no. That's why I'm going to continue to quote the scripture where God told us. Right. That way you can't lie against us. But that's what they're waiting. They're waiting for us to say something off of our own opinion, off of our own emotion. We're going to stick to the scriptures. We're going to stick to God's word. So you're saying they're paying attention real closely. Oh, yes. Guys. Best believe. They're, they're probably reporting. They're, they're doing all types of stuff. Right. But, I mean, the same people you're reporting us to, they have a Bible in their office. Right. That government has a Bible in their office. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to turn the page to Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Right. Where are we at? Um, 2 John 6, sir. 2 John 6. Read it one more time. 2 John verse 6. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. That we walk after his commandments. Is that it? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Watch yes, sir. this. No, let's let's go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Yes, sir. Let's see, uh, because then you're gonna have brothers and sisters that say, well. You know, I have a personal relationship with God. Not if you don't keep the commandments, you don't. Right. Not if you not if you're in sin. Read. First John chapter two and verse three. And hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. This you heard what it says? This is how you know you know God. If you keep his commandments. Meaning you don't know God. You could have been going to church your whole life. But if you're not keeping his commandments, you don't know the Lord. Because you're not doing his laws. So it doesn't matter how long you've been going to church right. if you're not applying the commandments. If you're supporting something that is against God, that means you definitely don't know him. Read. He that saith I know him. That person that says, no, you can't tell me nothing. I, I know God. I got a personal relationship. Read. And keepeth not his commandments. But you're not keeping his commandments. Is a liar. What did it say? Is a liar. It's a cause, if we're not keeping the commandments of God, guess what the Lord calls us? He calls us liars. So you have to keep the commandments in order to have a personal relationship with God. So 
For you sisters that wear pants, you don't have a personal relationship with God. Because right. one of the commandments is you're not supposed to be wearing what belongs to a man. Let's get that Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Because that's something that a lot, that, that, that was one of the spirits uh, that started with the whole LGBTQ. Right. LGBTQ. Y'all look at the title now. Y'all look at the, the name of the class. <laughs> Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. No, the brothers in purple said that. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. You see that? Deuteronomy 22 and 5, the Lord states that the woman is not supposed to wear what belongs to a man. You look at a bathroom sign. Right. You see the sister with the dress on, the brother with pants on. You look at, uh, what do you call it? You look at marriages. The sister has a beautiful dress on. The brother has pants on. When the last time you ever see a princess wearing pants? 60 years ago, sisters never wore pants. Maybe the other nations were, the Chinese and the white woman, but all four mothers never wore pants. What kind of spirit does a sister get when she puts on pants? She puts on a masculine spirit. Same thing. What kind of spirit does a man get when he puts on a dress? That man puts on an effeminate spirit. spirit. You know what's heavy about that, Officer Les? Uh, yesterday we were teaching kids. Mm -hmm. This kid is like four years old, six years old. And they can identify that easily. They know that a woman is supposed to wear a dress and a man is supposed to wear pants. But as soon as we, we, we talk to the parents or the adults, we can see that they're in a Stockholm Syndrome mind state because they automatically want to rebuttal. The kids, they pointed directly at the sign like, no, a girl wears a dress. It, it, a boy it, wears pants. Yeah, it kind of shocked the kids for a second because even the little girl was like, yeah, why am I wearing pants? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> she was like, she understood. Mind you, this child was in single digits. Right. This little baby was about eight, nine years old. Right. Exactly. Eight or nine years old. And she understood. Like, yeah, uh, when, when uh, I think it was uh, Officer Gedaliah asked her, why are you wearing, why, so do you think it's okay to wear pants? The little kid was like, no, nope. because you're making sense, sir. If if I just agreed with you that a boy don't look right in a dress, what makes it okay for me to be in pants? Right. That's the spirit, that's that sodomy, that LGBTQ, all of that, all in one. That's what that is. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go to uh, Revelations chapter 11, verse 18. Watch this. Because you know who pushes this agenda more than anybody? The United States of America. Read what you got. Revelations chapter 11 and verse 18. Read. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is... 11 and verse 8, sir. 11 and verse 8, yes, uh -huh. sir. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. Of that great city, which is talking about America, Babylon the Great. Here, read. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. You see that? It's called Sodom and Egypt. Why is it called Sodom and Egypt? Why is this place called Sodom? Hmm. Because we're doing the same things here in America that our forefathers were doing in Sodom, that our foremothers were doing in Sodom before the Most High wasted it, before the Most High destroyed that city. God calls this place Sodom, right? Let's look up the word Sodom. Give me that in the Merriam-Webster's. Get Deuteron and give me Deuteronomy chapter twenty-three and verse seventeen. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-three, verse seventeen. It says that our dead bodies would uh, would be found would be here in Sodom and in Egypt. Our dead bodies, meaning what? We we are known as the congregation of the dead. Okay. Meaning we are dead spiritually. The, what gives us life is the laws. You understand? But we are a dead people right now. We are dead because we are in our sin. We need to come out of our sin. That way we can obtain eternal life. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. There shall be what? No whore of the daughters of Israel. Okay, so there should be no whore of the daughter of Israel. Read nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Nor a sodomite. Let's get that. Let's pull up that definition for sodomite. We all know a whore is a hoe. Right. We all know that. A hoe that sleeps from 
man to man, woman to woman, dog, beast. So one who practices sodomy. Click on sodomy. Uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. Read that, Officer Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Read. Ain't anal or oral copulation with a member of the same or opposite sex. You see, key word, with the same or opposite sex. It says anal or oral copulation with a member of the same or opposite sex. Look at that second one down there. Copulation. With an animal. So that means intercourse, sexual intercourse with an animal. Mm. So what is the Lord letting us know? The Lord is letting us know that our forefathers and our foremothers, they were doing these things. We were doing these type of things when we were in Egypt. Let's prove it. Hold that. Keep that up there. Give me Leviticus 18. Hold that also. Leviticus 18, and let's read verse 22 again. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 22. Go ahead. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Uh -huh. It is an abomination. So homosexual, lesbian, this is what that's going into. Read. Neither shall thy lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. What did we just read on the definition of sodomy? Copulation with an animal. Give me, give me a different, uh, give me dictionary.com. Let's see what that one says. Read that again, Officer Kyle. Yes, sir. Neither shall I lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. So God says we're not supposed to be marrying dogs, and this is why this place is called spiritual Sodom. Right. Because this is the same place here in America that accepts uh, marriages with beasts. You can marry your dog here in America. You can, uh, you can change your gender here in America. That's why this is spiritual Sodom. Set, look at uh, number three, bestiality. Sodomy is known as bestiality. Why is this in the Bible? Why did he put thou shalt not lie with a beast? Because that's something that some of our people did, did deal with. Right. Even today, some of y'all behind closed doors. Some of y'all ain't right, man. Some of y'all are not right. Some of y'all are playing around with cats and dogs or whatever, whatever the hell y'all playing with. Y'all better stop that stuff. Y'all need to repent. The, when, we, when we think about these scriptures, we laugh at them, but believe it or not, it's a brother or sister out there that's dealing with this. Right. That's why it's in the scriptures. There's a brother or sister that's actually dealing with these things. You read that in the beginning with Romans 15 and 4. Right. That's why I learned Right. It. They're like, oh, you know, you laughing about it. You may be laughing. This ain't funny, y'all. You you may have somebody that that, guess what, you know them, but... You don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. So guess what? The, God wrote this in the Bible for a reason, because we have brothers and sisters out there that deal with this spirit right, right now. I'm talking about right now, not just back in the day, not just the LGBTQ. I'm talking about people even in the truth Shalom, that are battling Shalom that lust. Yep. That's crazy. Hey, but, you know, pray. Hey, pray to the Lord, fast and pray. Do what you got to do, but repent. Repent. That's why we're here telling you this. Was that it on uh, sodomy? No. That was because uh, that, that dictionary.com had like the same. Uh, see if you can find a different website. Go go to a different. Uh, find sodomy on something else. You go ahead and read read that, Officer Kyle. Yes, sir. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Uh -huh. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. God calls that thing confusion. Mm. He calls all, when you read about Leviticus chapter 18, you're reading about all the laws that go against the LGBTQ. You're reading about all the laws that go against it. You're not supposed to sleep with your mother, your, your, your father, your brother, your sister, your stepfather, your uncle. Leviticus chapter 18 goes into the laws. This It's called uh, sexual immorality. When you break one of the laws of Leviticus chapter 18, it goes into the sexual laws. Because God already gave us uh, the laws that we were supposed to keep. Adam and Eve from the beginning. Right. Adam and Eve. She was his flesh. Where you at? Did you get one? All right, what does that say? 
<laughs> Go ahead, read. Pull it up. Let me see it. Uh, nah, we're good. We're good. Take that down. All right, let's move on. Give me Genesis chapter 18. Well, you know what? Watch this. Pull up the, uh, let's get, we got to get something out the way real quick in regards to this LGBTQ, right? Right. Get uh, Genesis chapter 9. Give me the uh, pride flag, the gay pride flag. Bring it up. You know what I want, right? Yes, sir. With the rainbow? Yes, sir. Hey, pull that up. Genesis 9 and verse uh, 13. Yeah. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 13. Start with verse 12. 12. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 12. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generation. Watch this. I do set my bow in the cloud. God says, I set my rainbow in the cloud, in the sky. Read. And it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Read. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. The rainbow is going to be seen in the skies, right? In the cloud. Read. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you. So the rainbow is a covenant between the children of, between us and his children, the children of Israel, read. Of every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Read. And the bow shall be in the cloud. Come on. And I will look upon it that I may that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. So the rainbow is a sacred, sacred covenant. Right. That is a sacred covenant that God made. It, him promising that he would not flood the earth again. And we appreciate that covenant yeah, because yeah. we understand there was major destruction at that time when he did that because the people of the earth were wicked and evil and they did not want to hear what God had to say. So what did he have to do? He had to bring destruction by flooding the earth. So that rainbow has nothing, nothing to do with gay pride. That rainbow has nothing to do with LGBTQ. That is our covenant. with the. That's the covenant that he made with, with the Israelites. So what they did is they, 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 they took the rainbow and tried to turn it into something that is not of God, that was ungodly. That's what they did with our rainbow. The rainbow has, the rainbow has nothing to do. Now, if I want to wear a rainbow, people are going to think I'm damn gay. What is, what is going on? We're not even thinking that. Guess what? Way before y'all ever tried to steal our rainbow, the Lord already gave it to us in righteousness. The Lord already set that up as an emblem, as a token of his covenant. We're reading about it in Genesis chapter 9. That's evil, man. Get, uh, can I get a scripture? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Are oh, you in the spirit? Yes, sir. I was just, in the lineup. <laughs> just like the officer was bringing out, they took what, what the Most High made a covenant with our forefathers, and they completely corrupted it. You can't even go outside wearing any type, no more than three colors. If you wear more, more anything more than three colors, you represent gay pride now. <laughs> right, right. You, I'm looking at people like they crazy. Right. Isaiah chapter 5. I got you. 20. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Woe unto them that call evil good. So the scripture is saying destruction unto them that call evil good. Read. And good evil. And good evil. So what they did with our flag is they swapped it around. Now something that was good for us, they're using it for evil. Right. When it was meant to be good. It was meant to be a covenant. That's when right. we look at it, we're supposed to remember how the Most High delivered our people, right. our people, because of the, the, the destruction, the sin that was going on during the times of Noah. Correct. So now we, when we look at the rainbow, we see anything that has anything to do of something good. Now the, the, the world has it, it's corrupted to be evil. They've now, associated it now right. with something that's We can't uh, even defined. use it. We it, can't even associate ourselves with it now. <laughs> hey, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. I don't right. care if they got their mind in the gutter. 
You know, we got brothers that have the rainbow in their garments. And right. guess what? So the pure, all things are pure. Right. So we understand that ain't got nothing to do with the uh, with the ungodliness of LGBTQ. Right. We understand that. Give me that. In, uh, let's get Genesis chapter 19 and verse 1. We're going to power read. Yes, let's read, since we're talking about the LGBTQ, let's read about a community that was heavily, heavily engulfed in the LGBTQ community before it was ever called LGBTQ. It was called Sodom. Mm. And we read about it in Genesis 19. Let's get that, 19 and 1. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 1. We're going to power read, y'all. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate Matter of... Matter of fact, let's go back real quick, Genesis chapter 18 and read verse 20. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Their sin is very grievous to the Lord. The Lord couldn't take it no more. Read. I will go down now and see whether they have done all, all together according unto the cry of it, which is coming to me. And if not, I will know. All right. Now go to 19 and 1. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. Come on. And he said, Behold now, my lords turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night. And wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the streets all night. They was not afraid. <laughs> they said, We're going to be here. We, we in these streets. They ain't, hey, we're going to rebuke with all authority. <laughs> Read. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him. And entered into his house. Come on. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Come on. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom. The men of Sodom. This is the origin and the etymology of Sodom or Sodomites. Read. Compass the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. Both old and young. Read. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into thee this night? Come on. Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Bring them unto us, that we may know them. Mm. What does that mean, that we may know them? That we may know them. Let's get Judges chapter 19. I think that's it. Judges 19, that we may know them. Is, does this mean that they're going to introduce themselves and hold a conversation? Uh One second. Give me that. Let me see. I'm sorry, 19. Judges 19, not 9. Yes, sir. Um, all right, read verse. Uh, this is uh, the sodomy of Gebeah. We just want to know what it, what, it, what it means that we may know him. Read verse 22. Judges chapter 19 and verse 22. Come on. Now as they were making their hearts merry. Behold the men of the city, certain sons of Belial. Certain sons of the devil, just like in Sodom, there were many sons of the devil. Read. Beset the house round about, and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house. The old man saying, bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. Isn't that what we just read? Yes, that sir. we may know him? Read. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them, and said unto them, Nay, my brother, nay, I pray you. Do not so wickedly. Why? All they want to do is know him. Read. See, seeing that this man is come into mine house, do not this folly. Come on. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out and humble ye them, and do with them that do unto them what seemeth good unto you. Come on. But unto this man do not so vow a thing. God calls sodomy a vile thing. A vile, hey, look up that word vile. Keep reading. Yes, sir. Verse 25. But the man would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her. And they knew her by doing what? And abused her all night until the morning. All night until the morning. So what do you think it means that they abused her? They raped her. Right. They raped her. So what were the men in Sodom trying to do when we we're reading in Genesis chapter 19? What were they trying to do to these two men that were in Lot's house? They were, they were trying to be vile. 
which means foul, nasty, <laughs> unpleasant, horrible. Uh, these are the synonyms. Abominable. Sickening. Sickening. Whoa. By doing what? LGBTQ acts. Right. Trying to lie with man as with uh, womankind. Perverted. Evil. Yucky. <laughs> You're yucky. Yeah, that's right there next to damnable. Hellish. Mm. What else we got? Disgustful. Wicked. Wicked. Ugh. Low, Vomitous. Low down. Man, we can keep going. Vulgar. <laughs> Deplorable. Yeah. Ratchet. Right up there by it's distasteful. Ratchet. Yeah, ratchet. <laughs> Look, right up there. Yeah. Go to ratchet. You ratchet, man. Despicable. Okay, I, I'm just saying it. It's actually wretched, but that's where we get that from. Right. Remember when Paul said that? Oh, wretched soul of mine. He was letting you know, Paul was letting you know, I'm ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ratchet. That's what it go into. Perverted. We just spell it wrong in the hood. We don't put a W. Mm, say perverted. Perverted, yeah. That's what it means to be vile. He said, don't do this nasty, unpleasant, disagreeable, horrid, horrible, dreadful, abominable, atrocious. That's what he said. Don't do this stuff. Goodness gracious, come on. All right, let's go back. Let's finish reading. Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 4. Uh, verse 5. Verse 5. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know him, know them. That we may rape them, that we may abuse them. Read. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after them. Come on. And said, I pray you. Brethren, do not so wickedly. We just read about the same spirit in Judges 19. Right. He said, do not so wickedly. Why? Because they were gay. They were lesbian. They were, they were, they were, they were vile. <laughs> they were yucky. Diabolical. <laughs> they were abominable. That's what God said. Read. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. You see that? He said, I got, I got two, daughters, two daughters. He was like, but don't, come on, don't defile these men. Don't do that. Hey, that is one of the most, that's got to be one of the most degrading acts. I know um, you, you hear about brothers like, you know, they get raped in jail. Right. They're never the same. Brothers like that, they're never the same thing for you sisters. It's the same, but it's it never happens. It, it's rare for a man. Remember, David Ch Dave Chappelle did that stand-up where he said, hey, uh, you know, if a man get raped, we ain't got a 1-800 hotline right. that you could call. <laughs> he said, for us, it's, it's you know, you right. don't, yeah, you don't hear about that when it comes to us. We ain't got no 1-800 hotline where we can call and talk to somebody, get counsel. He said, you got, you get raped, you guys get up and walk it off. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, that somebody taking your manhood, can you, oh, my goodness. That's one of the reasons why I fall in line, I keep the laws. I ain't got, I ain't got no business in jail. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's the fear of the Lord, man. But guess what? Here in Sodom, that's what was taking place. So he says, unto these men, do nothing. Don't do that to these men. What is, what's wrong with y'all? Who raised you? Right. <laughs> Read. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Well, now, what did they say? And they said, stand back. They said, hey, get out the way. Stand back. We're going to get these men. Read. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn. Meaning this guy right here, he, can't, he, he lives here in Sodom. Read. And he will needs be a judge. Now he trying to tell us what to do. He, got the, he just moved here. He got the nerve to tell us what to do. Read. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. Uh-oh. So now, now they said we're going to do that to you now. They got demons. Woo! Them. They got demons, man. Legions. legions. Legions of demons. Come on. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. They came to break the door, man. Read. But the men put forth their hand. Hey, I'm telling you, got, I'm telling you, a lot of these sodomites, they got the spirit of murder on them. Right, right. Even those sisters that are butchers, that are dykes. I remember growing up, many of them, many of them ended up in jail for murder. Mm. These sisters that have that butch and dyke spirit, 
a lot of them have a murder spirit on them. You brothers got to tread carefully around these spirits. These brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, that, that sodomy spirit is a murder spirit. We're reading about that right here. They hate themselves. They hate their people. Read. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. Come on. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. <laughs> Read. And the men said unto Lot, Has thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place. So those two men, those two angels, guess what? They destroyed those men. Read. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. Uh -huh. And the Lord have sent us to destroy it. Remember what these men are in case y'all forgot. You read verse 1. These were two angels. Right. God, they said God sent us to come destroy this place. Read. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place. For the Lord will destroy this city. So he was telling them, he was like, hey, get up, let's go. This, hey, it's about to go down. Sodom is going to be destroyed, utterly destroyed. That's the same thing that we do out there in the streets when we teach our people. We do the same thing. We say, hey, matter of fact, get Revelations 18 and 4. Revelations, he said, come on and get up out of this place. It is it's going to be fire and destruction. Remember, this place is called spiritual Sodom. So we're telling you the same thing. You better come out of this place. Read. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. Come on. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. What is her? Babylon, spiritual Sodom, also known as what? America. Come out of the ways and the customs of America. Read. That ye be not partakers of her sins. That way you don't partake in the sins that they, that they, that they have done and that way you don't have to partake in the destruction that's going to come. We're telling you the same thing. Right. Bible prophecy never fails. It's going to go down here in America, y'all. So if you have brothers and sisters that are in, involved in this type of lifestyle, send them to class. Show them that, guess what? Do not take pride in LGBTQ. Take pride in God's laws. That's right. Take pride in repentance. All right? Where are we at? Let's go back. Yes, sir. Read verse 14. Verse 14, and Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. You see that? So his sons-in-law, they thought he was playing around. Yeah. They're like, man, he, he playing games. Ain't nothing going to happen. They didn't take him serious. Read. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here. Least thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. He said, come bring your family, because if you don't, you're going to be destroyed with the sins of the city. Read. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand and upon the, the hand of his wife. So he was lingering. He was taking his time. Read. And upon the hand of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful unto him. You see that? The Lord was being merciful to Lot. Why was he lingering? His, his, wife, his wife was taking the time. Right. That's what was happening. His wife wasn't repenting. His family was taking their time. They did not take them serious. That happens with a lot of brothers and sisters today. Guess what? Their wife and their family is their, is their stumbling block. Is the reason why they don't repent, why they take their time when it comes to do the Lord's work, why they don't have a sense of urgency. Right. Because their wife don't believe, so hey, I can't, I can't, you know, my wife, I gotta, I gotta wait. Hold on, she's, she got put a makeup on. Hold on, I, I, I want to get to the Sabbath, but my wife ain't changed yet, so now I'm late. I'm late to the Sabbath. I'm late to this. I can't be a part of this office because you know, uh, my wife wants me to spend more time with her. Y'all need to understand, man. Don't let nobody take your crown. Don't let nobody hinder you. Right. We're gonna see what kind of spirit his wife had. She played a major part in the family lingering. You're going to see why. Read. The Lord being merciful unto him. But all praise to the Most High. He had mercy for Lot. So they, he, he, he snatched, they snatched him up out of there. Read. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. You see that? They brought him forth, meaning they snatched him up and got him up out of there. Read. 
And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. He said, he said, escape for your life and don't even look back. Don't even look back. That's what this is. This is a spiritual story, y'all. Mm. This is very spiritual. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Let's get. Give me that in uh, Matthew. I believe it's. I'm sorry, Luke chapter nine, verse sixty-one. What does it mean to look back? Luke. Luke chapter 9, verse 61. Luke chapter 9 and verse 61. Come on. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell. You see that? He said, Lord, I'm going to do the work. I'm going to repent. Oh, I know I'm an Israelite. Hey, I'm going to eventually come to the Sabbath. I'm going to come to the school one day. Right. Read. Which are at home at my house. But I, I just got to go. I got to talk to my family. I just got to talk to my wife about this. There's, the, you know, my job, I, there's a few things, you know, there's, there's a, there's a three-headed line in the street, you know, there's, right. there's some things I got to do, you know, that's kind of in my way right now. So you come with all these excuses to why you're not, you're not trying to follow God wholeheartedly. You say you want to do it, but then you, you give all these excuses why you're not doing it. Read. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow uh -huh. and looking back. And what? And looking back. You looking back because you want to please your family. You want to please your friends or, or whatever it is. Read. Is fit for the kingdom of God. Why? Because you don't prioritize the Lord. You don't prioritize the commandments. You trim your ways. You look back. You miss your old friends. You miss you miss the weed. You miss the alcohol. Right. You miss the lesbianism. You miss the, the homosexuality. You miss these things. You're looking back. And if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. You are not fit for the kingdom of God. You know what's heavy about that, officer? When you read Genesis 19, in the beginning, he had two daughters. They have not known a man. But when you read down, he had uh, uh, other daughters who had, you know, sons-in-law, daughters-in-law. So the, the, the wife of Lot, Lot's wife, was that's what they was looking back to, mm -hmm. those other children. Yo. And that's a lot of people's problem are the stumbling block, their family. Their family getting away because how your family feel. Now nah, you're supposed to follow the most high God. And that's what Lot's wife downfall. She was worried about everything else back. What about those kids? What about the other kids? He said, take these two kids right. and let's get out of here. That's right. I'm telling you, let's go back to Genesis. Let's finish reading that. Genesis 19 and uh, 18. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 18. And Lot said unto them, O not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Come on. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. It is not a little one, and my soul shall live. And he said unto them, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for, for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither. Haste, meaning hurry up and escape. Come on. For I cannot do anything to thou, be, to thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. Come on. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah. What did the Lord do? Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah. You hear and that? Upon Gomorrah. Hey, that's a black man talking. He said he rained on them. Because he ain't talking about water. He made it rain on them. And he was not talking about uh, water. Read. And fire from the Lord out of heaven. You hear that? Just like, guess what? Spiritual Sodom. Back in the day. The real Sodom was destroyed by because it rained brimstone and fire. Mm. Here in spiritual Sodom, it's going to rain brimstone and fire again. You know what those raindrops are going to look like, though? Nuclear missiles. Right. Nuclear bombs. That's what it's going to rain here in spiritual Sodom. Fire and destruction, World War III. So you're telling me the LGB alphabet people... They love God. The elemental P, yo. They, they believe in the Bible. Uh-huh. That that's their foundation. Didn't read this story? I guess they don't fear God. They don't fear God. They don't want to hear about the Bible. They don't care about They hate God. Mm. 
They hate God. But guess what? The Lord says, okay. <laughs> uh, get Proverbs 8.36. Hold this. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 36. Come on. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. You wrong your own soul, read. All they that hate me love death. All they that hate me, guess what? You hate God, then you love death. Meaning prepare yourself for a miserable, horrible death. Right. That's what God says. Read it one more time. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Death. Everybody that hates God's ways and you hate God's laws, you love death. Where's that scripture where it says the most high hate of sinners? Uh, you know what? I, you know where that's, that's at? In Sirach. S Sirach. Yeah. That's where I'm at now. Sirach, Sirach twelve. Sirach twelve. Yes, sir. Yeah. There you go. Watch this. Sirach chapter twelve, verse six. Sirach chapter twelve and verse six. For the most high hateth sinners. But God is love. For the most high hateth sinners. Is this the King James Version Bible? <laughs> Read it again. For the most high hated sinners. So we don't know what your religion, your pork chop eating pastor's talking about. We have no idea what that man's talking about. Or your female pastor, which is against the laws of God. We don't understand what you're talking about. Because God is not just love, but he hates sinners as well. Read that again. For the most high hated sinners. He hates sinners. Read. He hates those that lie with mankind as with womankind. Right. He hates those that defile themselves to lie with beasts, to marry a dog, marry a woman. He hates those that change their kind and try to be and become transgenders. Read. And will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. You hear that? Vengeance unto the ungodly. Is that it? No, sir. Read. And keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. All right. Let's go back. Where were we? Genesis. Let's finish that off. Genesis chapter 19, and we are, read verse 24 again. Genesis chapter 19, verse 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Now, I, I, I want y'all to get some. Watch this. Watch this. Because we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. Give me, give me Genesis. Let's backtrack. Real quick, watch this. I'm going to show you all something. Give me Genesis. Where are we at? Yes. Give me Genesis chapter 18, I believe it is. We're just going to go back a little bit. Is that it? No, that's that's not it. That's not it. Where he was having uh, trouble with the herdsmen. I just read this the other day. I read this actually last. All right. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so Genesis 13, and let's read verse 8. Genesis chapter 13 and verse 8. We're going to show you all a little something about Sodom, some history. Read. And Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and, and thy herdmen. Come on. For we be brethren. It is not the whole land before thee. You see that? So Abraham saw that there was friction between his men and Lot's men. He said, hey, let's, you know, there's too much land. We ain't got nothing to fight about. Right. Let's split the land. Read. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. Come on. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. At this time, guess what? Uh, at this time, Lot did not live in Sodom. Right. He didn't live in Gomorrah yet. You understand? And Abraham was saying, you take whatever land you want, I'm going to take my, my, my part of the land. Read. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Whoa, 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 whoa. He said it was well watered everywhere. What does that mean? That means it was beautiful. Right. It was well watered. If it was well watered, that means there was much cultivation, much fish. Just like America used to be. Just like America. There was a, guess what? And when you keep reading, you say, Lot saw it. He was like, I want to go over there. Right. I want, I want to be where it's well watered, where it's very fruitful, where I can cultivate, where I can grow agriculture, where I can feed my flocks. 
just like here. I want to go to America and live the American dream right. where I can get a good job, where I can take care of my kids. Same spirit today. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. That was before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and left it desolate. What's going to happen here in America? God says the prophecy is it's going to be destroyed as we read it in Revelation 18 and 4. Be not partakers of her sins. Read. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. So his wife, there goes his wife again. Right. The same one that was lingering earlier and holding everybody back. A lot of you sisters, I'm telling you, all need to repent, man. A lot of y'all hinder your Lord, you hinder your husband right. from doing the work of God. Mm. You, you are going to be like that same woman. You're going to be looking back. You know your Lord wants to do the work, but you give him a hard time. The scripture says, seek the kingdom of heaven first. The scripture says, let every husband be as though he had no wife. Right. Meaning he has a lot of work to do to help his people. You sisters should be exhorting your husband, your Lord, to go out there and do the work, not being a hindrance to him. But a lot of y'all got that same spirit of Lot's wife. A lot of y'all, y'all don't want to see, y'all don't want to see no real revolution go down. Right. Y'all don't want to see your man become a revolutionary man. You don't want to see, you don't want to, um, what do you call it? You want to uh, give him a hard time when he's trying to lead the house. He's trying to lead the house, you giving him a hard time. You bucking up. You're hindering, you're lingering, just like Lot's wife was. Read. Verse 27. No, read verse 26 again. Yes, sir. Verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. So what do we say? What do we say a lot? We say, you're going to be salty, meaning right. you're going to regret right. that. Right. You're going to regret that. Damn. You're going to regret that. You're going to become a pillar of salt. That's what she became. Dang. Read. Verse 27, and Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Come on. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. But it was well watered. <laughs> that shows you how much destruction, how much destruction. There was smoke and fire and flames everywhere. Read. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. You see that? And then as we continue to read, there's more sexual immorality that goes on even after that. Right. Because they learned that <laughs> They learned that back over there in Sodom and Gomorrah. Exactly. Now all of a sudden he gets drunk, his daughter, he starts sleeping with his daughter. I'm telling you, this, this, this stuff, that's called sodomy pedophilia, no. incest, that all was in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's where that came from. You read about that in the Bible, and God destroyed that place. So what do you think is going to happen here in America? Right. What do you think is going to happen? Give me Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all. God says marriage between a man and a wife, a husband and a wife, that's honorable. That's honorable in the eyes of the Lord. You could respect that right there. That's being moral. That's being moral. Let's get that. Let's get the definition of moral because we're reading about sexual immorality. Let's read about what it means to be moral, M-A-R-A-L, M-O-R-A-L, moral. And uh, also, Kyle, give me Sirach 16 and 8. All right, here we go. Moral, concerned with the principles of right and wrong behavior and the goodness of or badness of human character. All right, scroll up. It says to be virtuous, good, righteous. I like that word. To, be, to have morals is to be righteous. All right, let's get that. Let's see. Hold that. Show me what does righteous mean in the Bible. Watch this. This is Google now. This ain't the Bible on, on the screen, is it? This is Google. Google just said to be righteous, right? Now, don't know. It says to be morally right, justifiable, virtuous. Go back to moral. Go back to moral. We're going to read the definition of righteous in the Bible. We're going to use the Bible to pull the definition of righteous. 
Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. Come on. And it shall be our righteousness. You shall be righteous. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. You hear that? If you keep the commandments. That's what, that's what, mean, that's what it means to have morality, to be moral. Right. That's the definition of righteous. Scroll up. Let's see what word we're looking at. No, no, no. Go down. I'm sorry. We're looking at moral. It's synonymous with the word righteous. Get Psalms 119, 172. Just in case y'all think that we're just pulling, uh, we're just making up our own definitions here in the Bible. The Bible just said in Deuteronomy 6 and 25, to be righteous is to keep the commandments. Let's see if it says it again. Psalms chapter 119, verse 172. My tongue shall speak of thy word. You hear that? My tongue shall speak, thus saith the Lord. Read. For all thy commandments are righteousness. That's the definition of being moral, of having right, of being righteous is keeping the commandments of God. Right. Where were we? What was I going to get? So that's being Sirach. moral. Read that in Sirach. Sirach chapter 16 and verse 8. So a lot of times, you know what holds us back from not being righteous is our pride. And now we're going to get that, get that, uh, get that also, pride. Read what you got. Sirach chapter 16 and verse 8. Come on. Neither spare he the place where Lot sojourned. Read it again. Neither spare he the place where Lot sojourned. And didn't we read about that history back in Genesis? Yes, sir. What place was this that Lot sojourned at? Where did he live? Sodom and Gomorrah. It said that God did not spare that place. How come God, why did God not spare that place? Why did he only spare Lot and his family? Read. But abhorred them. But abhorred them, meaning God hated Sodom and Gomorrah. For what? For their pride. For their what? For their pride. Oh, man. Ain't that's what this sookie, month's called? Sookie, sookie, nah. Ain't that's what this month's called? It's called gay, gay pride. pride. LGBTQ, pride. LMNOP, WXYZ, FM 102.3, whatever they call it. They always had a pride in there. Man. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Hey, read that one more time, and let's get the definition of pride, man. Sirach chapter 16 and verse 8, Neither spare he the place where Lot sojourned, Come on. but abhorred them for their pride. It says God hated them for their pride. Here we go, the definition of pride. The quality or state of being proud. Inordinate self-esteem. Conceit, meaning you're conceited. Mm -hmm. you're, you're hard-headed. You can't be told anything. You con you con get that conceit real quick. A favorable okay. opinion. You don't care about what the Lord got to say. Damn. You go off of your own opinions. Well, I feel like my emotions is that God is love. We Look just read that God hates sinners. Look at B. A result of mental activity thought. Your own M thought. What I think. Look, look, look. Uh, your own superior knowledge, the landlord's conceit of his own superior knowledge, meaning <laughs> your, your, your knowledge excels that of the Most High in God. Right. Your knowledge is better than what the Bible got to say. Okay, because of that pride is the same reason that the Lord killed Sodom and Gomorrah. Go back. Go back to pride. Individual opinion. Wow. Okay, look at what it says. Uh, context two. Proud or disdainful Behavior or treatment. Let's get that disdain. Look at this. A feeling of content regarded as, okay, now that's not what I'll go back. Go back. So scroll down. So a reasonable, justifiable self respect. All right, let's go out of that, man. So give me Proverbs. Give me that. Uh, pride goeth before destruction. I believe it's 16. Wow. So we read about, you know what God calls that spirit that was in Sodom and Gomorrah? He calls it a pride spirit. Mm. Damn. Read that. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. No, uh, yeah, that's it. Go ahead. Pride goeth before destruction. Say it again. Pride goeth before destruction. Read it again. Pride goeth before destruction. It says pride goeth before destruction. So go ahead. Use God's rainbow. As your signet of wickedness, mm. go ahead and stand up for everything, your opinion, your pride, what you believe in, because apparently your knowledge excels God. 
your own your your knowledge excels your creator. Sure. Right. Your 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 knowledge, you're smarter than God. So go ahead and, you know, parade around and 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 marry marry your dog. Do whatever whatever floats your boat. But understand that if you don't repent, destruction is gonna come because of that pride. We read it again. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. A haughty. You know what's another word for haughty? Conceit. Conceited. Right. A haughty spirit, meaning you can't be told anything. You're not humble. You're not humble. You can't be told anything. Only one that can tell you anything is the white man. Right. When there's a brother that looks like you of your own people, nah, I only listen to the white man. And they're the ones who approve. They're, they're, they're two best, what, they're two favorite presidents. Good old Bill Clinton and Bill Obama. Bill Clinton and Obama that stood up for gay for the LGBTQ said that they're, they're, they're going to fight for it. Right. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 14, 16. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 16. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 and verse 16. Come on. Thus in process of time. In a process of time. An ungodly custom grew, grown strong was just, kept. You see that? An ungodly custom was what? Grown strong was kept as a law. So he says, I'm going to defend this like I defend laws. Right. That's what Joe Biden said. We just read about that on the article from the New York Times. Right. Joe Biden said, I'm going to defend LGBTQ and their rights. So this ungodly custom, he said he's going to uphold and it's going to grow stronger. Read. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Uh, all right, jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. Moreover, this was not enough for them. You hear that? They're not satisfied with that. This ain't, this ain't enough. This is not enough. Read. Th that they erred in the knowledge of God. You hear that? And they erred in the knowledge of God. They don't know God. Read. But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance. This is, this is what they war for. This is why they, they say we're going to stand up, we're going to provide, we're going to stand up for LGBTQ. Read. Those so great plagues called they peace. You see that? And then when they get, when they get, when they get judgment sent on them, right. they don't understand. Guess what? You're not in peace. You, gotta, you, got other, you got other countries that are completely against that. You go to Haiti, certain parts of Jamaica. Right. You will get a plague on your behind if they find out that you're breaking God's laws. Even to this day, they still, like, your grandmothers, your grandfathers, they're like, what? You mess around, get stoned in the mother countries. And, and, and that's the heavy thing, because I know you can vouch for that. When we grew up, I know my parents, that like, that was forbidden in the household. I'm about, he, yeah. But as each generation grow and grow, it just gets become more wicked. It becomes more, yep. Our brothers and sisters are becoming more desensitized to it because of the evil communication. Right. The things that they're seeing on TV. Social the uh, Gabrielle Union, get that. Get that Gabrielle Union with, with her son. Social media. Yeah, social media. They're just desensitizing our people and normalizing the abnormal. Right. They are normalizing the abnormal. Mm. That's what they're doing. And as long as we keep seeing it every day, we become desensitized. I'll give you an example of how we become desensitized. When the thing with Eric Garner came out and Tamir Rice and Sandra Bland, you see the protests were heavy and huge and big. The more and the more that our black brothers get shot down in the streets, the less of an outcry there is. The more it just says, oh, we got another case. Normal. Oh, right. there goes another case. So we become desensitized where it's like, well, we might as well just put up with it and deal with it. It's the norm now. It's the norm. Brothers get shot for no reason. You know what else is normalized? Black on black crime. Right. That's why we don't we don't protest. We don't say anything when black on black crime. We'll protest when a white cop shoots us, but us killing each other? Oh no, well, it I've even heard, we've even seen it where it says it's okay as long as it's our people doing it. Right. Remember that? There was a, uh, I, don't, I think it was a sister uh, that said it, where uh, she said it on a, uh, on a video on YouTube. It was like, well, that's because that's us doing it, so it's okay. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Oh, because you see the white man as God, it's okay. Because when you close your eyes, white Jesus pops up in your mind. Right. That's why you agree. You're, you, 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 uh, you disagree 
with a white man killing a black man, but it's okay for blacks and black on black to to destroy one another. You evil as hell. And even when they protest for the for for us when we get shot down in the streets, usually it's they're protesting when it's our people dating the other nations. Right. They pick and choose which ones they really want to protest because there's a lot of, you know, cops shooting us down in the streets. But they pick and choose which one with George Floyd, for instance. Correct. What was his girlfriend? His, you know, his girlfriend was what? Edomite. Uh, Edomite. Yo. So that's what they choose. Let's protest this one. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Right. Popular persuasion. That's it. Let's keep reading. Yes, sir. Verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon 1423. Go ahead. For whist. They slew for whilst, for whilst they slew their children and sacrificed. Just them. like today, abortions. You best believe LGBTQ is all about abortions. Right. They're all they're all for that. Why? Because they're not even creating. The first, the number one commandment, the first commandment ever given in Genesis 1 was to be fruitful and multiply. How, how is it that you love your people, but yet you're not procreating? That's what builds power and strength, right? Yes, sir. The birth of our, our sons and our daughters. But you say you're, you're about Black Lives Matter, but you don't even create black life. You don't even create black life. So the Black Lives Matter is a completely it's a complete oxymoron. Because who's who's the one that's over the Black Lives Matter? LGBTQ. LGBT, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Read. It's crazy. For while as they slew their children and sacrifices, which is abortions today, or use secret ceremonies. Go ahead. Or made re revelings of strange rites. Strange rites. Damn. That's what we see. That's a strange. That's strange when we see those. Uh, LGBTQ parades and protests. This is this is what God calls strange rights. They're fighting for strange rights, strange for strange flesh. Put it together, y'all. Connect the dots. Read verse twenty-four. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. They are, they defiled the marriages. Mm. They confused what how marriage was honorable by now breaking the laws of God. And doing what God says don't do. Read. But either one slew another traitorously. Uh-huh. And grieved him by adultery. Come on. So they was crabs in a barrel. They're tearing one, in, one another down. Read. So that there reign in all men without exception blood, manslaughter. Come on. Theft and dissimulation. Fakeness. Go ahead. Corruption. Come on. Unfaithfulness. Tumult. Perjury. Perjury goes into lying. Read. Disquieting of good men. You know what that is? Disquieting of good men? Defamation of the Israelites. Mm. Defaming those men that are actually standing up for rights. Right. Defamation of that sister that stood up. That stood up and said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm heterosexual. So they, they disquieted her. They said, no, they, she got bullied for that. Disquieting of good men. Read. Forgiveness of good of good turns. Forgiveness of the laws of God. Read. Defiling of souls. Defiling themselves. Changing of kind. Say it again. Changing of kind. Transgenders. Right? What else do they call them besides transgenders? What else they got? What else they? They, they, they use all these other terms. I can't even keep up with it. But go ahead. Disorder in marriages, adultery, and shameless. Uncleanness. So this is what the Lord calls all of this. This is all uncleanness. It's shamelessness. Let's go to, um, give me Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Because you got brothers and sisters that they'll, that, guess what they'll say? Well, God, God made me gay. He created me gay. Right. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if the Lord created you gay. Read what the Bible says. Read what God has to tell you. Read. E Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 29. Lo, this only have I found. Come on. That God hath made man upright. God made you perfect. When he made you a woman, he made you perfect. You were supposed to marry a man so that you could be fruitful and multiply, so that you could be a wife. It says God made man upright. What does it mean that he made you upright? Because some people be like, oh, I was, born, I, I was born a man, but my heart tells me I'm a woman. Or I was born a woman, but my heart tells me I'm a man. <laughs> no, no, no. That's your own invention. Read that. Finish that off. 
but they have sought out many inventions. You sought out your own invention. You invented that thought. Right. You came up with that thought. God made you upright. He made you perfect. Let's prove that. Psalms 37 verse 37 says that God made man upright. What does it mean when God said that he made you upright? Read that. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 37. Come on. Mark the perfect man. Mark the perfect man. And behold the upright. Meaning God made you perfect. Behold the upright. God made man upright. He marked you and made you perfect when you were born. You were perfect as a man. You were perfect as the woman that God created you to be. Right. Read it one more time. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright. And behold the upright. Is that all on that? For the end of that man is peace. You see that? For your end is peace, not Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember what the end of Sodom and Gomorrah was. Destruction. Let's go back. Let's go back. Give me uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Romans chapter 1. How much time we got? All praises. Give me Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Because maybe, you know, we didn't go into the New Testament yet. Maybe they're, oh, that's the Old Testament. The Old okay, Testament. let's see what the New Testament got to say. Romans chapter 1 and verse 24. Come on. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. God, because you wanted to follow after your own mind, your own opinion, your own pride, God says, okay, then l let them be to their own destruction. You don't want to repent? Okay, that's on you. Read. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. To do what? To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. I'm telling, hey, when you dishonor, you abuse your own body. Mm. You abuse your own body. Think about a man with a man. That's crazy. That's not, that's not, that's strange. You can't, you know, you, you, you can't create life. God says that's strange. Read. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? You know who did? LGBTQ with the rainbow. Right. The truth is, is that it was a covenant between us, between him and the Israelites that he would never flood the earth again. But they changed the truth of God into a lie by creating it as the rainbow flag to represent gay pride. They ain't got nothing to do with gay pride. That's our symbol. That's our signet given to us by our Heavenly Father. It ain't got nothing to do with what he abhors, right. with what he hates. Read. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. They serve man more than they do their own creator. They think they're smarter than God. Right. They think no judgment is coming to this place. They are very comfortable in their sin. We read about that as we continue to uh, read along. Read. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Come on. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Now, yucky affections. Remember that word vile? Yes, sir. Deplorable. <laughs> You understand? Remember those synonyms. Read. For even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. You see that? Even the woman changed the natural use to that which is against what's natural, what's normal for her to be with a man. No, she changed that. She became vile. She became a dyke, a butch. She started to give herself a fade. You see them sisters with the fade? Or with them Wakanda bald heads. I'm telling you, everything y'all everything learn, y'all learn, y'all, you dykes and you butchers, y'all learn from Rihanna, from TV. Everything you do, you learn from TV. Wakanda and bald headed, all bald headed and all that. So, so you tell They me, learn that from TV, from evil communication. So you tell me birds understand this. <laughs> Fishes. Fish understand. All, dogs, all kind of animals understand yep. this, but when it comes to our people, Cause I, and, and the reason why it's our people, because all the other nations, they don't get down like that. You don't see, you know, in Iran and all them, they don't oh, get no, down like that. No. They'll get put to death for stuff like that. They, they don't get down like they that. They understand that that's detrimental to their nation. Right. They understand that's counterproductive right. to the strength of their government, their army. Their, they understand procreating life. China, right? They Right. China got 7 billion people. Right. So what does the rest of the nation say? Hey, y'all watch out. They strong. That's a strong nation. They got 7 billion people or whatever <laughs> whatever, whatever it is that China got. Right. But they, they're known as a powerhouse. You understand? But for some reason, we haven't figured that out. 
because we're being led by these by the 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 uh the other nations that teach us these lies. Right. We worship the creature more than the creator, meaning the Bible. Read. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which against nature. Which is lesbianism. And you know what kills me? You got a uh you'll have a sister who's a lesbian. And she'll get with a with a butch or a dyke that look like a man. That look like a man. And and then this butch and dyke uses a strap on. Why don't you just get a man? Why don't you just get the real deal? What, what I mean, what, honestly, I'm like, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Confusion. That is confusion. Read. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman. All praises. And you know what? For all you brothers and sisters, some of y'all that are online that are angry with us because we're standing up for the laws of God, because we're rising up against the evildoers, we give all praises to the Most High. Because guess what? There's people online right now saying that they repented from that, all that praises. they appreciate the scriptures that we've given them. All praises. Praise to the most we got we brothers and sisters online that have turned over a new leaf and fear God. And they understand that nuclear destruction is coming here to America, and they don't want to be involved with that mess when it comes. Because the destruction is inevitable. Let's keep reading. Romans 1, 27. Verse 27. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another. Come on. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. That is unseemly. That is unseemly. That is unnatural. Men with men? God said it was unseemly. Oh, the brothers in purple said that they don't know. God, we're reading it in the Bible. He said men with men. That's unseemly. That's not, that's not normal. In the New Testament. In the New Testament. Paul, your favorite, your favorite pro prophet. Right. You don't go to this scripture. Your fav you Paulites, your favorite. Uh, give me that Galatians 3 and 28, brother. <laughs> Read what you got. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was met. You see that? Which was me. me. They received the recompense of their error, which was, what does that mean? That plague, that, uh, that judgment that God sent you, which is right, which is correct judgment. Let's get an example of one of those judgments. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 22. This is what happens. When you want to you play around with this uh, community, I'm going to show you what kind of stuff is residing in this community. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 22. This the, is the recompense that was meet for you following after your own lust. Read. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption. The Lord will smite you with a consumption, something that will consume you, that will consume your health. Read. And with a fever. And it'll give you, you, <laughs> I got a fever. I don't know what happened. Yeah. You about to find out what's going on. Read. And with an inflammation. Oh, doctor, I got a, I got an inflammation. I don't know what's wrong with my uh, genitalia. Read. And with an extreme burning. Hey, doc, it pee when I burn, doc. Mm. Doc, it pees when I burn. You brothers and you sisters, y'all know what I'm talking about. That's why God says marriage is honorable because right. you don't have to deal with any of this when you honor marriage because you have the same partner. But what happens with these LGBTQ and all that? A lot of them share partners. Right. A lot of them believe in orgies. Right. A lot of them are bisexual, meaning they'll sleep with both. Swingers. Yeah, those swingers and all that. Thank you. They're swingers, so they sleep with multiple people. So what does God incorporate into your life? Extreme burning, inflammation, fever, consumption. That recompense that was meat is also known as AIDS, HIV, syphilis, gonorrhea, gonococcus. All this nasty, right. nasty stuff that you know is out there waiting for you if you want to continue to live in that lifestyle. If you want to continue to live in sin. Read that. Let's go back to Romans 1. Yes, sir. We left all. Let's read verse 28. Romans chapter 1 and verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. You see that? They hated God. Read. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. God says, okay, let them be. Okay, you want to be evil, go, go fulfill your wickedness. Because at the end of the day, your little YOLO life, that little YOLO mentality that you have, guess what? You're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Right. It ain't no such thing as YOLO. God ain't sweet like that where, oh, if I just die, I ain't got to worry about how I lived my life because I'm going to be dead and I ain't going to see nothing. Oh, no, the most I'm going to bring your ashy, nasty behind right back out of that grave, right. and you are going to meet your maker. Don't we say that a lot, meet your yeah. maker? You're going to meet your maker. You're going to realize he's a lot more powerful than your opinion. 
than your emotion, than what you think. Read. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Come on. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness? What does that mean? Immorality. Because right. we read about what was moral. Moral means to be righteous. You were filled with all unrighteousness. The opposite. Let's get what unrighteous is real quick. Give me that in 1 John, uh, I believe that's uh, 5 and 17. 1 John, is that 1 John 5 and 17? What is unrighteousness? 1 John 5 and 17, is that correct? Or 5 uh, and 7? Yes, sir. 5 Read and 17. That. Read that. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 17. So when you were full of unrighteousness, what were you full of? All unrighteousness is sin. Meaning you hated the commandments of God. You hated the laws of God. God made it a law to say, thou shalt not lie with man as with womankind, and you got mad. You hated God. But yet you call yourself a Christian. Right. You call yourself Catholic. You call yourself whatever millions of religions there are on the earth. When God throughout the whole Bible just says, keep my commandments. That destroys all the millions of religions that are out there. Just keep my commandments from the first page all the way to the last page of the book. Blessed are they that keep his commandments. Right. Ain't got nothing to do with these millions of religions. What religion are y'all? We What? What religion are we? We just keep the commandments like the Bible say. The Bible don't say nothing about being in Christianity, being a Catholic, right. being Islam, being a Buddha. But Bible don't say none of that. So a lot of y'all come up out of these churches that say uh, Episcopalian, Pentecostal, y'all Lutheran. Lutheran. Y'all, the Bible don't say you got you get salvation that way, y'all. You get salvation by just keeping the commandments. But a lot of y'all don't know the commandments. So Israel united in Christ, we teach the commandments. Come and learn. Right. Let's finish that. Let's go back to Romans one. And read verse 29. Verse 29. We're almost done. Romans chapter 1, verse 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, uh -huh. fornication, wickedness, covetousness, Come on. maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit. Debate. <laughs> That's what they do. Read. Ma uh, malignity. malignity. Whisperers. Uh -huh. Backbiters. Haters, haters of, of God. Go ahead. Read. <laughs> haters, haters of, of God. God. Read it again. Haters, Haters of, of God. God. Read it again. Haters, Haters of, of God. God. Read. Despiteful. Proud. Proud. Uh-oh. Proud. Read. Boasters. Oh, they boasting in their nasty wickedness. They boast. Boasting. Man. They bragging about, I'm very flamboyant. I'm, I'm flaming, burning. <laughs> hey, they be boasting about, they be so happy about their pride. I'm telling you. Oh, Read. Man. Uh, boasters, inventors of evil things. Remember, they sought out their own inventions. God made you upright. He made you perfect. But you're an inventor of your own evil thing. Read. Disobedient to parents. Why? Because your parents, they had to come together to create you. Right. They, lead, they led by example. They showed you, no, uh, me and your mama, guess what? In order for you to be here, we had to do the do for you to be here. We led by example. We showed you how a man and a woman must come together to, to bring forth children. So you're disobedient to your parents because you said, well, I don't want to be like mama. I'm a, I don't want to have a husband. I'm going to have a, I'm gonna have a, a, what do you call it, a woman. Or I don't want to be like pops. I want to have a, 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 a husband, not a, not a wife. You're disobedient to your parents. Your parents led by actions. The reason you're born is because they disagreed with LGBTQ. Right. How about that? The reason you're born right now to even fight for this so-called LGBTQ is because somebody was against it. Because they had sex to have you the right way. <laughs> Read. Without understanding. Come on. Covenant breakers. Covenant breakers. Without natural affection. Come on. Implaceable unmerciful. Read. Watch this. Who knowing the judgment of God. They know. Y'all know about Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't get it twisted, but y'all still prideful, though. And before pride goes destruction, read. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. God says those things are worthy of death. Not the brothers in purple. The Lord said those things are worthy of death, and we agree. We agree with God and the Bible. Read. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And they have pleasure in that thing. Mm. They have pleasure in that thing. Dang. Boy, Whoa. hey, y'all hey, got to repent, come back to the laws of God. Repent and come back. Give me Acts 3 and 19. A couple more scriptures. 
Repent, repent, repent. Acts 3, 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Come on. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So if you're living in that lifestyle, repent, convert, change. That's what we're saying. We're not here to judge you, uh, you know, where 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 Condemn you're condemned you. right. and, and now you don't get salvation. No, you can still change. If you're watching this, that means you're breathing and you're listening and you can repent. You can change your ways right now. Read. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. That those sins may be blotted out. Give me Exodus thir uh, 23 and 2. Exodus 23 and 2. Hurry up. Let's Exodus read. chapter 23 and verse 2. Read. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Don't follow a multitude to do evil. Do not follow after this crowd. Don't do it because you're going to end up facing the same judgment as them. Read. Neither shall I speak in a case to decline after many to rest judgment. Let's go back. Let's uh, give me First Kings chapter eight verse forty six. First Kings chapter eight and verse forty six. Come on. If they sin against thee, uh -huh. for there is no man that sinneth not. Guess what? There's no man that sinneth not. You may be dealing with LGBTQ, but you got brothers that they're not gay. They did. They smoke cigarettes, or they jump from you know they're whoremongers, or you got sisters that uh, they love money, they love whatever power or they hate themselves, at the end of the day, we must all repent, okay? We must all repent. Read. And thou be angry with them. And but deliver the Lord them. is angry with us, read. And deliver them to the enemy. Which, which he did where? Here in America, because our motherland is Jerusalem. And that's one of the, one of, now today, Tel Aviv is one of the gayest places on earth. Pull that up before we, before we finish the class. Watch this. Watch this. We still got that? Those the, with Tel Aviv, yeah, the top five. Right. The Lord took us out of our homeland mm. because of our wickedness, and He put us in the land of our captivity, which is known as America. This is where we were put in time out, where we are being punished, where we must repent and get right with God. You understand? Here we go. Five of the world's most gay friendly city, Tel Aviv. Wow, where's Tel Aviv at? Tel Aviv is in Israel. Mm. Tel Aviv is in Israel. That's where we're from. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the nation of Israel, and that is our land. And guess what? Our enemies have taken it over and have made it one of the greatest LGBT communities on the earth. There it is, right up there, all praises. Tel Aviv. A bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Mm -mm. You see that? Our enemies are now in our land. And they're polluting it and defiling it with their agenda. Let's finish that. First Kings 8. First Kings. Yep. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 40, 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. And thy be angry with them. Uh -huh. And deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives into the land of the enemy. Come on. Far near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Remember, bethink yourself. If you was born a woman, bethink yourself if you think you a man. No, remind Remind yourself you're a woman, you're a princess. You, brother, if you know you was born a man and you, you playing that effeminate role, you playing that uh, you're abusing yourself, remember you was born a king. You are a brother. That's right. You are a king. You ain't a female. Read. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they will carry captives, and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them right. that carry them captive, saying, we have sinned. So we have sinned. Because when you read 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, it says that nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves or of mankind, meaning homosexuals, will inherit the kingdom of God. You can read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. I wanted to get that, but we're going to close out Israel. Remember, repent. Uh, we got classes seven days a week, three times a day, israelunite.org. Donate to the Booster Club. Okay, make sure you download our app, IUIC TV. Look it up, download the app where we have many classes, skits and comedy and all types of stuff for our people, okay? Music. Uh, what am I forgetting? That's everything? Okay, so Israel, continue to follow us. We got classes coming up shortly after this. All right, with that, hey, share this class. LGBTQ, lust guarantees. What, is, what, what does it say? Lust guarantees booty tragedies quickly. That's what it stands for. <laughs>
Hey, Israel. And with that, I'm Officer Halez. Officer Kalel. With that, we say Shalom. Shalom.